Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Third and Central Podcast, the only podcast dedicated solely to the University of Louisville's baseball program. As always, this is your host, Matt Sefkovic, joined by Aaron Turner. Aaron, I've got to tell a funny story before we get started tonight where you and I are texting back and forth watching the Vandy game, and we realized that there's some weather coming in on Wednesday evening here in, in the Louisville area, and you've got some other obligations going on since you're a high school baseball coach as well. And we were like, oh, shoot, maybe um, maybe we can't record tomorrow night. So how does uh, 15 minutes sound? So um, here we are, 15 minutes later, we decided to hop on and record this episode. So obviously appreciate you being flexible. Um, other than all that craziness that's been going on, how's everything going your way out in St. Louis? You people are getting the raw, uncut version of Matt and Aaron tonight. This is the least prepared that either one of us have ever been for a recording. It's going good, though. Going good. Had some absolutely wild weather the last week or so. So always a uh, bit been on alert for that. Uh, Louisville's, you know, I'm sure you guys are in the same boat too. Um, but on you know on the baseball diamond, had uh, had some recent success, and it, it's been been a fun last couple of weeks for the Louisville baseball team and I'm, I'm excited to break it down tonight yeah definitely and you know one thing outside of Louisville baseball that we talk about all the time we talk, we've been talking about weather a lot lately you and I because being just west of us we get a lot of your leftovers that head this way so you, Aaron kind of prepares me he's like oh well, this happened um so in about a day it's going to be coming your way so I, I think we're getting the leftovers from what you all saw um, luckily, it wasn't too bad your way, um, and hopefully it's the same for us through the night and uh, tomorrow because it looks like it could get a little dicey. But but like you said, there's been a lot of success on the baseball field, so a lot to talk about there. So let's go ahead and jump right in after uh, the loss to Vandy on Tuesday. So over the weekend, we swept Boston College on the road, which is just a massive, massive series for this team at this point in the season. We'll dive pretty deep into that here in just a few minutes lost tonight four to two to Vandy um, all that to be said right now we're 29 and 19 13 11 in conference play which is good for uh, fourth in the Atlantic division as we speak right now Louisville is 56 in the RPI which is up quite a bit that's the highest they've been I think since like the second week of the season but you can't really look at those numbers because at that point in the season that there really hasn't been enough games played to to measure the team. So really the highest they've been all season long. Strength of schedule is up to 35th. That's going to continue to rise as the schedule gets more difficult um, towards the end of the season, which we'll talk about too. Uh, one thing of note with the sweep of Boston College and some help from our friends or enemies, however you want to look at it, throughout the conference over the weekend, Louisville did punch a ticket into the conference tournament, which is big news because that's Something we all know we we don't like to talk about, but we didn't get to participate in last year. So um, that that's good to see that Louisville is going to be included in the conference tournament this year. Um, Louisville starting to get a little bit of love from the uh, tournament projections um, as of this week. Not everybody has them included, but they're starting to get talked about, and I, I think that's the biggest thing is we're we're on the outside looking in and most of them, but the fact that Louisville is amongst the conversation of you know, maybe next four out or, uh, you know, one of those categories that if they make some noise going down the stretch, they, they will hear their name called um, during the selection show. So that's kind of where we are over the last couple days um, and weekend. Aaron, what are your just brief takeaways before we dive into that a little bit more? You know, I, I think that there's a lot to take in here. I, I think we've talked about it time and time again about you know, we sit at 13 wins in the ACC right now. That sweep of Boston College was massive. It's basically the road to 15. You get to 15 wins in the ACC, you're feeling pretty pretty good about your chances to to participate in the tournament. Um, and right now, sitting at 13 with six games left to play, you have to like your odds of of winning two of those six, and you know, winning maybe one or two more to be able to to boost that resume even more and get get up over that 15 just solidify ourselves as a tournament team. Um, but I think you know, you mentioned it right before we we hit record. Uh, RPI only being up to 56 right now, a little bit shaky. Uh, would obviously love to see that number continue to get higher and and higher, but 
I, I don't I don't know if I see us overly improving too much on that number. Um, you know, I, I guess for me, I'm, I'm running through a million scenarios in my mind. You know, what is it going to take to to not only make the tournament, but be for me to be confident in this team being a, a dangerous team in the tournament? And I, I think you bring up a couple good points there. And first off, let's talk about RPI because, you know, I like to talk about RPI like as soon as the season starts and you always tell me to shut up. But now, now's the time that we really start diving into a little bit more. And I'm not going to act like I'm some RPI guru. I just I just look at it often. But if you look at the RPI needs report, which um, what's the name of the website? Boy, Boyd's report puts out and I'm sorry, Boyd's world. They put it out and it, it, it it's not 100 percent accurate because depending on what teams around you do, it, it, it's kind of hard to tell. But it, it's a good indicator of what what you need to do to get to. Um, certain rankings in RPI before the season ends. Um, obviously, right now they have Louisville, no way to reach the top eight, no way to reach the top 16, to reach the top 32. Keep in mind, this was before Vandy when Louisville had eight games left on the season. To reach the top 32, they said Louisville would have to win all eight games. So that can't happen. So that's, they can't reach the top 32 at this point in time, which I think was a, a stretch anyways. So now the next kind of slot that they talk about is reaching the top 45. And they say to reach the top 45, Louisville has to win two home games and four road games, three home and three road, or four home and two road. So obviously the two home and four road, that scenario is now gone because they lost to to Vandy. So that that's that's not a possible situation anymore so now you've got to go um three and three home and road or four home and two on the road to get in the top 45 it's not going to be easy because the the three road games that you have left are against north carolina who's as of right now the number 11 team in the country so you, you've got to find a way to to win some games down there this weekend which we'll talk about in a little bit but i say all that to there, there's a path to get to the top 45, but basically Louisville's going to have to win, you know, they're going to have to win at least four games here um, to do so probably at home to make that happen. So we'll see how the remaining schedule plays out. We'll talk about it a little bit more, but let's go ahead and recap the Boston College series because like you said, it was, it was a very, very important series for this team. When you talk about getting to 15 wins, uh, th th those three are, are massive to get you there. So let's kind of run through it real quick. Um, it was a Thursday, Friday, Saturday series. Thursday, Louisville was cruising um, through the sixth inning. They were up uh, eight to nothing. And you're like, okay, you got Gongor on the mound. We're good. Um, and then all of a sudden, the seventh inning happened and Boston College scores seven runs. Get back. Uh, it's, it's an eight to seven ball game now. So it, you know, you're sitting here as a fan and you're like, okay, we've we've seen this song and dance before. You know, this happened. Clemson, we gave up a seven-run lead um, the, the weekend before. Um, but Louisville stormed back in the top of the eighth inning and they scored four runs, which was massive, I think, for confidence reasons. And just to show that, hey, um, yes, we gave up a big lead, but we fought back and did not um, allow um, the, you know, the situations that we've seen the back come back to haunt us. Uh, in the following weekend. So uh, Louisville ended up winning that game 12 to uh, twelve to 7. Gongora threw, he got to pick up the win um, through five really strong innings and then got, like I said, got in the trouble in, in the sixth inning. So um, good to see that, which is what we've seen from him most of the year. Um, the, the second game of the series, Evan Webster and Tucker Biven were just absolutely electric. Uh, they they pitched the, the two of them pitched the whole game. Webster went seven, Tucker went uh, the final two, and Louisville didn't give up a single run, winning that game uh, three to nothing. So um, good to see that. Um, but the biggest thing, in my opinion, of the entire weekend was what happened on Saturday with Colton Hartman on the mound. We've stressed for how many weeks now we need a third starter. We have not had one. We've tried multiple guys in that position. We've had some injuries. Lots gone into it but we have not been able to find a third starter. And Hartman, starting on the road in the ACC, 
went five and two thirds, uh, just gave up one run and it was just electric on the mound. Um, honestly, when he was up there on the mound, his, his curveball, I don't know, I'd never thought of this before. Uh, it it kind of reminded me of a big looping curveball like Reed Detmers, and he was just, he controlled the game like Reed did. So just super good to see um, Hartman do that. Um, Forbes came in at the end of the game um, in the ninth and we got in a little bit of trouble. Uh, Forbes actually came in on um, – Oh gosh, what was it? Thursday as well. And through the final two and a third and was electric. You and I were texting back and forth about that because he was, um, I, I think that was probably his best outing of the season. Had two, uh, four strikeouts in just two and a third inning. So uh, glad to see Forbes. If we can get that consistency from him and continue to see growth from Hartman going down the stretch, I think we've finally found our nucleus of guys that we're going to see this bullpen um, be relied upon as the season goes down the stretch. Yeah, so you know, I, I, as you were talking there, they keyed in on a couple of, of points that you brought up, and and the first thing that came to mind is, you know, Colton Hartman goes out there and shoves in a start. Hadn't really seen that yet from Hartman. We we know about the potential. We knew about the guy that he was coming onto campus. We were talking about how we're we're even lucky to have him on campus, mm-hmm. and so he finally comes in maybe he's starting to blossom into the guy that we thought that he was going to be and he's just a freshman so that's you know there there are a lot of growing pains there um you know not to be overly critical of him but as desperate as we are for a, for a third starter right now do you think that Hartman is that guy I think we're going to he, he's the guy in my opinion, this weekend at North Carolina, just because of what he did at Boston College. So he, he's going to get his his number called again. I think we've got to see that from him again. Can we expect him to go on the road in the number 11 team in the country and throw five and a third of one-run baseball? Probably not. But if we can get him to throw five or six innings and give up two or three runs and give us a chance on Sunday to, to win the baseball game, that's not something we've really had this season. So I, I don't think – you know, our, our expectations are super high. Like you said, he's a freshman, but he's a top 75 kid in his class. Like he's, he's not somebody we thought was going to show up on campus. So the expectations for him are high. And and that's because the type of player he is and what we were getting from him. Um, But I I think to expect that from him this weekend at UNC is probably a little far-fetched, but I, I think if we could just see him just go give us four, five, six quality innings and let the bullpen cross our fingers and take over um, and, and let the, let the offense do some work and keep us in the game. I think that's all we have to, all we can expect from him. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't want to sound like I'm putting a lot of pressure on Colton um, because that's, that's definitely not fair, fair to him at all. But I really do think that a solid third starter is the difference between us in, in a few weeks, looking at a bubble team on the field of 64 to us being a, very dangerous three seed in a regional. Yeah, I think when we talked about this going into the Clemson series, Louisville at that point in time was four and five on Sunday games. Clemson beat us, so we were four and six. So now we're we're five and six on Sunday. So and that that's a staple. We've talked about this numerous times. That's if you talk to Dan about, you know, part of the reasons why he's been successful at Louisville is they've always won Sunday games, as good teams have. And this team just has not. They're under 500 on Sundays, and that's that's part of the reason why we're kind of outside looking in right now. But if you can flip that script and start to win those Sunday games, because let's face it, that's, you know, most games in conference play, your Sunday game, we keep calling Sunday, third game of the series, however you want to look at it, your Sunday game is, it's typically a rubber game, right? It, it's one and one going into the series. Louisville, I think this is something that we really we haven't hit home on enough. I, d- I don't want to speak these words out loud, but the even the series Louisville hasn't won this year in conference play. They haven't got swept. They've always won at least one game in every series in conference play. We've swept two, NC State and now uh, Boston College, but we've won at least one game in every series, which has been massive. So – to have that opportunity to have a rubber game on Sunday and have a third reliable arm, I think it's absolutely massive going forward. For sure. I I 100% agree. And and I kind of want to pivot here because we, we, we talked about a lot of guys that we thought could step up 
you know, be that third starter. We've always talked about Justin West. Didn't really look that part tonight against Vandy. Uh, you know, going to kind of a breakdown of that Vanderbilt midweek loss here. Um, jump, we jumped out to a quick one nothing lead on a Zion Rose double in the top of the first. Vandy comes back, leadoff hitter, first pitch of the game, solo shot, tie it up. You know, you kind of think that <laughs> it's going to be one of those those games. You you just gotta gotta out slug your opponent and. Vandy ends up taking a two to one lead and into the second inning, Justin West unable to record an out. Carson Lee came in and, and cleaned up the mess in the first really liked what I saw from Carson Liggett though, out of the pen. Didn't, didn't get many innings tonight, but I, I definitely was a big fan of what I saw out of Liggett and, and the rest of the bullpen at that. I, I thought that that was something that we've seen at times this year, but has not always been consistent. So to see them, come out, put together a, a pretty solid performance, especially when uh, the, the starting pitching wasn't exactly there tonight. That, that was definitely a key for Louisville being even in, in the game to begin with. Um, you know, after, after that first inning though, nothing, nothing really crazy happened. Took a four, we were down four, one going into the ninth. Isaac Humphrey hits a, a, a shot to lead off the inning. You cut the deficit to four, two, uh, game got very interesting though with two outs. We load the bases. Alisea gets pinch hit for by Brandon Anderson, and he ends up striking out to end the game and dropping the battle of the barrel at Nashville. So definitely a game that you, you I definitely thought was very winnable, but I'm not necessarily upset with how we lost, which I cannot say about about many games that we've lost this year, honestly. Yeah, I think going into the game, I was I was pretty optimistic about it. You know, we came off, we were one of our last four games with the Northern game last Tuesday and then sweeping Boston College. And then you looked what Vandy's done. They were one and five in their last six games. The only, their only win during that stretch was Tennessee Tech. Two of those games, they got beat to death by – Georgia 10 to nothing and 14 to four. They were both run rules. So I think going into the game, you, I was pretty hopeful because I just thought that the way Vandy was playing, they were kind of, I don't want to say tanking. They're not, but they were more playing their best ball. And Louisville seemed like they were, you know, starting to, uh, starting to play a little better. But I think we used eight or nine different pitchers. You know how Tuesday or I say Tuesday midweek games are, they're, they're kind of a catch all. Um, so you, you really never know what you're going to get. Vandy got a pretty good start out of their um, starting pitcher. I think he went five or six innings and just gave up the run in the first. And after that kind of shut us down. Uh, but, you know, it's always a fun game when we play them. I'm, I'm glad that series has has come about. Love playing the battle of the barrel. I wish we could win a few more of them recently, but they've, they've had our number recently. I, I think that that will flip. It, it always does. You know, they'll win a couple, then we'll win a couple. That's kind of how this uh, game goes. But it, it's always fun when uh, Coach McDonald and Coach Corbin's teams get together because they're they're normally pretty competitive games. But I, I, I was really hoping we could go down there and snag this game because this would have been massive for the RPI. Yeah, I mean, this is this is one of those games where, you know, both teams are kind of down this year, but you can throw everything out the door whenever Louisville and Vandy get together. It happens every year. Not really sure what you're ever going to get from from this game. Um, so like, like you said, though, would have been massive for the RPI. Unfortunately, that's got to come from somewhere else now, um, which I am a little bit concerned about, but I will say I'm not as concerned as I thought I would be at this point. So let's go ahead and jump forward. Cause I know we've uh, talked about the last uh, week or so quite a bit, and we've got a lot to talk about going forward too. What's let's, let's just talk about, where we are we've touched on this a little bit but what do you think the ceiling and floor is for this team T- take whichever one you want first and then I'll take the other you know I, I think my biggest worry for this team is having to rely on the ACC tournament results to help push you into uh, the the field of 64 just because Historically, I don't know why we have never been 
good in the ACC tournament, no matter how good our teams have been in the regular season. It just has not clicked with us in the tournament. And I think my biggest worry right now is that over the next six games, we don't don't do enough to push us into that field of 64 mm-hmm. and kind of leaves us on the bubble. Um, so I'll, I'll take ceiling first. I, I think that the ceiling for this team is a super regional appearance. I, I am still hopeful and I will, I will say that that is still on the table. You're going to have to go through some powerhouse to get to that super regional. It It's going to be very tough. I've seen some regional projections that have us going to Arkansas some to, I believe, Indiana State, uh, Mississippi State. I think that that, you know, going to a place like Arkansas or Mississippi State definitely worries me. Now, just, you know, kind of reminiscent of that Texas A&M environment that we ran into a couple years ago. But I, I will still say that I think that the ceiling for this team is another super regional appearance. And I don't think you're far off from that. I think if this team is going to win a regional, and this this probably sound dumb coming out of my mouth, but I think if this team is going to win a regional, I think they have to win it in straight games. I don't think this team can come out of a loser's bracket. I just, as of this point, I don't think we have enough pitching to carry us into an extra game to come out of a loser's bracket. So I think you almost have to win it in straight games. But I, I will say this, I, if this team makes a regional, and we all know this, the committee has a sense of humor that would not surprise me one bit if we ended up in Lexington for a regional this year. We've seen it before, um, and it would not shock me if we went to and And honestly, send us there, right? Like, if you want to light a fire under our ass, send us to Lexington um, because we'd have a lot more to prove there than we would if they sent us out to Oregon State or something like that. Like at least we'd have um, have a little bit more passion, I think, playing here. So, anyways, I'd I'd love to see that happen. Um, a lot of baseball between that uh, time, but I would love uh, love to see us play in a regional in Lexington because we we played them in the postseason before, and it, it, it's it's gone pretty well for us in the past. So, sign me up for that. Um, so let's take the floor for this team. I, I think you know, this is obviously a harder conversation to have. I, you go down to. North Carolina this weekend, who's one of the best teams in the conference, number 11 team in the country, six in the RPI. Um, you're automatically getting a boost in your strength of schedule just for just for getting off the bus. So th- there's that. But what what happens if you go down there and North Carolina does what North Carolina has been doing to teams this year? And, and, you know, they take the series either two to one or, you know, God forbid they sweep you. Um that's then it becomes very problematic that you know all of a sudden you know we talked about getting to 15 wins okay then you then you have to beat Notre Dame and Notre Dame hasn't been great this year but guess what Notre Dame's 10 and 3 in their last 13 games they're they're not going to be a pushover we're we talked about getting Clemson at the right time because they were kind of you know they weren't playing their best baseball at that point in time they had a couple injuries didn't win the series, but we didn't get the best Clemson team. But we're, we're getting the best Notre Dame team. Um, not to mention, they have the weekend before us out of conference against Toledo. So not that they can rest, but, the, you know, Toledo's above 200 in RPI. So they're not going to have to play their best baseball. They may let a couple of guys off. So they're, they're going to be well rested for us because that, that series is going to be massive to them just like it's going to be to us so you know something happens and we we lay an egg down at North Carolina and then you put yourself in a must-win situation against Notre Dame and then go down to the um, ACC tournament and don't have a strong performance I mean th- this team could miss the tournament I mean that's there's projections out there right now that that that's the reality um, so I, I think that is kind of where we are super regional I think I mean if you get in the tournament it's it, it's house money right I mean you you go out there and you get a um, quality start from a couple guys and don't have to go to your bullpen much you you can win a regional we've seen it happen before um, so 
getting to super, it, it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility, but missing the tournament based on what we've seen and what Louisville team shows up, we, we could see that scenario shape up down the stretch as well. You know, I think it's interesting that you talked about Notre Dame, and I didn't know this. Notre Dame has Toledo the weekend before we see them, and talk about Notre Dame being a little bit well rested. But North Carolina had a scheduled weekend off uh, this past weekend. They're coming off a, just a, a midweek against Campbell. So not only is, is Notre Dame well rested, but you're getting a very well rested Tar Heel team too. That's uh that is a little bit concerning. Uh, I will say though, I'm I'm not I'm not gonna hit the panic button over losing this series. You know, if if we do take one of three, it's not the end of the world. I do think I don't think a sweep can happen. You have to walk away with at least one, and then you know, go go take the series against Notre Dame. And I I still think that we're in good shape. Obviously, you know you're not you're not hoping for bare minimum. You you want to see more, but just just for the sake of us sitting behind our microphones and and doing tournament math, I I think that we're we're still in good shape, even if we do just take one of three at North Carolina this weekend. No, I think I think you're spot on. I think if you here to me, here's the best path for us. If if you take one of three from North Carolina, so you're one and two, then you go beat Indiana. They're no pushover. They're, they're top 16 RPI, so they're right around where we are. Um, they're, you know, they're kind of one of the teams in the in the Big Ten that's making some noise. Um, so if you beat Indiana, you go – you're at two and two. Take two two games from Notre Dame, you're at four and three. I think if you finish four and three, um, that gets you to – let me do some quick math. What is that? Uh, is that 16 conference wins? Mm-hmm. If you get to 16 conference wins that way – I think if you're 16 and 14 in this uh, in this ACC this season, I, I think you're I think you're in. I mean, hell, Miami made it last year that with what 13 conference wins, or it was a couple years ago, thir- they had 13 wins in the ACC and made the tournament. So I think if you if you get to 16, I've been saying my magic number is 15, but I think 16 is just a um, little extra gravy on top, and and that extra win to me comes from the sweep of Boston College. Yes, yeah, for sure. And, you know, something else that really gets me excited, too, is we're getting all of our guys healthy at the right time. We we went to a long time without seeing Patrick Forbes. He's come back, and you were, we talked about him just looking dominant out of the bullpen. I think that's where we see him on long term. Uh, we've seen Brandon Anderson get some pinch hit opportunities recently. He was out for a while, too, with injury, so we're starting to see these key guys – get back and slowly build back up to the key roles that we thought they were going to have to begin with. Yeah. It's good to see some of these guys back. Um, you know, Brandon Anderson, I don't know what his role is going to be through the rest of the season, but having that extra pinch hit bat on the bench at all times is going to be huge. You know, typically that role has gone to the opposite catcher, whoever's not catching is kind of the the pinch hitter when they're when the number is called when they need that at bat. But I think to have that extra at bat on the bench with Anderson is going to be huge because you know Napleton is he's kind of struggling down the stretch right now. He hasn't been swinging it as hot as he was during the middle of the season. So I think having uh, BA as an option, um, I. I think it'd be tough right now to put him back in the starting lineup just because we've kind of solidified who who we are at this point in the season. Um, but having having BA there, um, having For, uh, Forbes come back, I mean, he I think his best outing was this weekend against Boston College. So having having a couple of these guys come back um, at at the perfect time, like you said, we we need wins right now, and we need a full we need a full arsenal right now. We've got it. So, so let, let's kind of break down what's coming up. We've talked about North Carolina a lot, a lot already. Let's kind of take a deeper dive there. Uh, so we we enter a, C, a series at Chapel Hill this weekend with North Carolina currently seventeen and seven uh, record in the ACC. Their first place in the Coastal Division. We like said ranked eleventh on the national scale. Um, like I talked about earlier, it's a very rare weekend off for North Carolina. Not sure I've seen a scheduled weekend off ever in the middle of conference play. That was 
very odd to me, but they are coming over off a midweek win over a good Campbell squad, 16-10, another slug fest, true to form for for college midweeks. And that that's going to be, you know, what we have to do this weekend to to beat North Carolina. We're going, we're going to have to out hit the Tar Heels. Uh they're led by uh what's going to be first rounder in the form of Vance Honeycutt. He's hitting 330 this year. He's got 18 home runs and 50 RBIs. And they're also uh, have Parks Harbor, who has really come on this year. He's hitting 366 with 17 home runs and 51 RBIs. Uh, they've got six starters in their lineup that are hitting over 300. This is a team that is going to hit and hit and hit, and they will wear you down. They'll, they will take a lot of pitches, get deep into the bullpen, um, and, and like I said, it's it's going to have to you know, you hate to have to keep relying on on Sebastian and, and Evan to really step up the way that they have been all year, but it, it's it's going to be key to get them some length on Friday and Saturday, help preserve that bullpen for what you assume is going to be a, a longer bullpen day on on Sunday. Um, so hopefully, the, you know, the guys step up. Offense continues to show up like they have been. Pitching staff continues to put it together, and uh, I, I really, I really do think that we can come out of here with a series win. Yeah, and it, it's going to be tough. I mean, North Carolina. If you look at their team and kind of their break down their roster, they are eighth in the country in the ERA, just over four, four point oh two, and they are seventeenth in the country in runs scored at eight point eight runs per game. So. When you kind of combine those two things, um, when you look at pitching, ERA is obviously very important. Look at uh, offense, rear run scored are very important. I and mean, look at those two statistics nationally, and they're both you know top twenty in the country. That that's a pretty good recipe for making a deep run in the tournament. So th- this is a team that if they did make a run to Omaha, I could see it happening. You know, Coach Forbes has been there for a couple years now, and uh, done very well, and he, his teams are really tough. Uh, Roger Williams, Louisville's pitching coach, um, he actually is from there. That's where he played his uh, college baseball back when um, Michael Jordan was playing basketball at UNC. So um, he kind of talked about that recently was he, when he was on the Dan McDonald uh, show a couple weeks ago. So um, Louisville's got their um, work cut out for him. This is going to be a good team, uh, a, a good test for them on the road going to be a rowdy environment North Carolina fans they, they typically show up for big time games you know they're probably going to have three four thousand fans um, at every single game and like you said this is going to be an opportunity that our bullpen I think is going to have to earn their stripes because this team offensively is going to hit the baseball so we're going to have to turn it over to the pin and let them go to work so we you know guys like Tucker Biven guys like um, Caden Campbell um Patrick Forbes, so we, we've got to see him do what he did this weekend. You know, we got to see our starters go, um, you know, six innings. That's I know that's a big ask, but we, we're going to have to see that to um, to chew up some of those middle innings. That way we don't rely on, you know, five or six from the bullpen every single game, because I think that will be, in my opinion, a recipe for disaster if, we, if we're asking the bullpen to get, you know, four or five innings every single night. Yeah, for sure. Um... I'm cautiously optimistic. I will forever be mm-hmm. cautiously optimistic. That's just the way that I am. I will always be a glass half full type of person with with Louisville baseball. So I am. Uh, I'm, I'm excited for this weekend. I love love watching a good college baseball series, and and this is gonna this is gonna be another good one. Yeah, I'm excited. I think um, I think this is a series that we can win. I mean, I you know we've talked about going down there. You you just can't get swept. That's I, and I I don't that's not the bar for Louisville baseball, but for where we are in the season, as far as if we're going to get in the tournament, we just have to find a way to win a game. And I think with Sebastian Gungora on Friday and Webster on Saturday, I think one of those two guys are going to come out of there with a win because that's, that's what they've done all season. They've given, and, and until they give us a reason to doubt what they've done and their accomplishments this year, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to continue to be optimistic until we no longer have any games left on the schedule. Like we've said a million times already, one of those two is going to come up with a win and let it be a dog fight on Sunday. And and that's it. it. Just, you know, win a game on Friday, win a game on Saturday. 
and, you know, let Hartman go out there and do his thing. You know, right now, like you said, he's a freshman. Um, just let him go out there and let his emotion get the best of him and do his thing. And, you know, let, let's get back here with a, another series win. Go ahead and get that 15 uh, conference wins before we even host Notre Dame the following weekend. Yep. So let's go ahead and jump over to your favorite segment of the night, which is the Pro Bowl update. I know there's a lot going on. As of recently, um, pro ball starting to ramp up, and you're you're seeing Louisville guys all over the place. So, kind of walk us through what's going on. Absolutely, got a lot going on. Uh, a couple guys taking home some pretty high honors uh, over the last couple weeks. Uh, two weeks ago, Ryan Hawks was named the Northwest League Pitcher of the Week, uh, following a dominant performance. He's been getting starts for the High A Everett Aqua Sox. Uh, he's his performance to earn him those honors. Uh, five innings, no hits, no runs, two walks, and six strikeouts. It's the first uh player of the week honors for Ryan and his young uh, professional career. So super excited for him. And a guy who's kind of been around a little bit longer than Ryan, Devin Mann, was named the International League Player of the Week this past week. Uh, he slashed 467. 579 and had an OPS of 1446 uh, highlighted by three doubles and a home run to go along with four walks and five runs scored. Absolutely massive week for Devin. He's been hitting well over 300 for the better part of the season. Now I uh, think there's going to be some opportunities for him with the big league club soon, especially the way that he's been swinging it. Uh, he's He's been in triple a for a while now, been, been buying his time, but I, I really do think that, this is going to be, you know, not only the year, but hopefully within the next month or two for, for Devin Mann to make his major league debut. And I want to keep uh, talking about Brendan McKay every week because it's just an awesome story. Love, love to talk about Brendan. He was recently promoted to AAA Durham in the Rays system. Uh, that's more just a formality as he continues to work back and, and build up innings to get back into a major league bullpen or maybe even the starting rotation with the Rays. Uh, he was dominant down in double A Montgomery had an ERA of about one over, I think it was four, four or five starts and every start that he had, he just continued to get stretched out further and further. So super happy for Brendan. And uh, like I said about Devin too, I, I think that Brendan's probably another month or two away from, from finding his way back onto a major league roster. One other thing I want to touch about, and you know a lot more about this than I do, it's not the best news for, for him, but it is maybe for us fans as Henry is down in AAA now, right? And it is, he's with Indianapolis, is that correct? Yes. So they're And they're actually in town through Sunday this week playing yes, they the are. Bads. So So anybody out there that wants to get a chance to watch Henry Davis in uh, minor league baseball, he'll be down here through Sunday. And – Paul Skeens is scheduled to pitch, I believe, also for Indianapolis at some point this week, or am I mistaken? I I believe that he's scheduled for Saturday. I'm not 100% positive on that. Don't have that in front of me at the moment. But the way it's been lining up, he has been usually a Friday or a Saturday guy. So great opportunity to to get out and go show some love to Henry. Um, and, and, you know, if you go and, and watch Paul Skeens, it's definitely an added bonus too. And I, I'm looking at the – schedule for the bats right now they do play on saturday at 7 15 it's it's halloween night so i don't know if if i'm looking at something wrong or if somebody down there at the bats is really confused um but it, it's not in fact halloween on saturday may 11th but it is to them you can celebrate um halfway to halloween by breaking out your costumes and trick-or-treating around the ballpark and watch henry davis mash hopefully on saturday night so um, hate hate to see Henry obviously um, move down to AAA, but for us local Louisville fans, it's a good opportunity to get out and and see him play. Hopefully, um, they can welcome him. One other thing I do want to touch on before we pop off here tonight is Louisville heads to obviously we've talked about it quite a bit North Carolina this weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then the final week of the season. It's going to be massive, and I think as Louisville fans, we need to go ahead and start planning for that because those four games are going to be huge as far as this team's postseason run, if, if there is one. Those, really, those four games could could come down to what it is. So Louisville plays that week, um, Tuesday, and then Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Tuesday is against Indiana, and then Thursday, Friday, Saturday um, is the, the final 
series of the weekend. They always play a Thursday, Friday, Saturday to close out um, to begin conference play or conference tournament the next week. So um, if, if you're not planning on going already, I highly encourage you to go down there, uh, grab a family member, grab a friend, because we're going to need that place to be packed out. It, it's going to be uh, four really important games. And if uh, Aaron, if you and I want to continue to talk about this team, we're, we, we need to, we're going to need to win those games. So we need, we need people to show up and show out and support this team. So um, again, Aaron, appreciate you um, being able to hop on tonight and talk about Louisville baseball. It, it was funny. I, I, we were sitting there, my, you, you texted me about recording tonight and I looked at my wife and I was like, Hey, um, we're going to go record the podcast tonight instead of tomorrow. And she was like, well, are you ready? And I was like, I, I mean, th there's few things that I could just hop on and talk about just at the drop of the hat. And Louisville baseball is one of those things. So, uh, so appreciate you being able to do the same and uh, hopping on just like we had been preparing uh, for this for a week. Yeah, I, I uh, you know, don't don't want to brag on myself. I, I don't want to claim to be a, a professional <laughs> podcaster or anything, but I, I'd say that that wasn't too bad for for uh, mostly doing it on the fly. <laughs> well again uh appreciate you hopping on appreciate you getting the pro ball update together for us because that is uh what you love the most and what people love you for the most so uh, in the meantime um we will be back next week after the indiana series to recap the final weekend um, against notre dame again keep in mind those dates because that is going to catch up and or come up on us very quickly with it being a thursday friday saturday series so a lot going on around college baseball, not just here locally, but all over the country. It's, it's. I mean, it, the tournament's almost here. These games are really important, so show up and show out for this team. Um, but in the meantime, before we get back behind the microphone, Aaron, I know you keep us all up to date with Cards and the Pros, so tell us where we can find your work. Yeah, you can find my work at the Louisville Baseball Alumni Report on Twitter. And you can find me on Louisville at Matt Sefcovic, and you can find my written work on Card Chronicle. And in the words of Sean Moth, we will see you at the ballpark. <laughs>